This lecture is about frequency domain filters. We've seen the properties of the Fourier transform. Now let's look at how to do filtering in the frequency or Fourier domain. One of the most important applications um, of these frequency domain concepts is using the uh, frequency domain to do uh, convolutions. So recall that by the convolution theorem, if we want to convolve a filter H with an image F, that is equivalent, the Fourier pair of that is equivalent to the Fourier transform of the filter times the Fourier transform of the image. So those are point by point multiplications instead of convolutions. So to go back to the spatial domain, we take the inverse Fourier transform of that product. So pictorially, we take our filter, take the fast Fourier transform of that to get capital H, do the same thing for the image, multiply those two point by point to get capital G, and then take the inverse fast Fourier transform to get the result in the spatial domain. So just some notes on this. The um, convolution kernel, H, um, has to be the same size as the image. So the reason is that we want to do a point-by-point -point multiplication of these two transforms. Those have to be the same size. So if necessary, we, can, we will pad the um, filter to be the same size as the image. So why would we want to do this? Um, basically, it, for large filters, it's cheaper to do convolutions using the frequency domain method. So um, the fast Fourier transform, recall the cost is order uh, mn times log mn, where mn is the number of points in the image. So that um, filtering then is dominated by that cost. Compare this to the convolution in the spatial domain, <coughs> that cost is little m times little n, that's the size of the filter, times the number of points in the image. So um, if we were to fix the image size, capital M, capital N, and look at how the cost increases with increasing filter size, um, in the spatial domain, the convolution increases linearly with the size of the filter, whereas the uh, cost in the spatial, in the frequency domain, is fixed. It doesn't matter how big the filter is. So it turns out that for large kernels, convolution in the frequency domain is faster than um, doing it in the spatial domain. So some practical notes here. I said that we had to uh, pad our filter to be the same size as our image. Basically expand it and fill all the unused values with zeros. In MATLAB you can do that by assigning the point in the lower right hand corner to be zero and MATLAB will go ahead and fill in the remaining elements with zero. Um, another note that th when you take the inverse Fourier transform to get the final result the results should be real, but um, there may be some tiny, tiny imaginary values due to machine precision. Uh, you can take the real of that to eliminate those. Let's do an example um, of filtering in the frequency domain. Let's take an image, I'll call it um, F. So this is our image. We'll go ahead and take the Fourier transform of that using MATLAB's FFT2. We want to work in the with double precision. So that gives us a um, transform that is the same size as the original image, but of type complex. So then let's go ahead and um, view that just for visualization and we'll take the log to enhance small values and take the uh, absolute value of those complex numbers and then we'll shift the uh, transform so that the uh, zero frequency is in the middle. 
whoops, I forgot to do um, my empty brackets here. So that is the uh, Fourier transform of this image, the circuit image here. Okay, so let's say we want to um, filter it with a box filter of size 20 by 20. So we'll create a filter in the uh, that's size n by n and we'll normalize it so that the total is equal to 1. And then I said we had to um, pad, so that result now is only a 20 by 20, but we want it to be the same size as our input image. So I need to pad it by assigning the point in the lower right hand corner uh, to be a 0. So um, just to see what that looks like, this is the filter now basically sitting in the upper left hand corner, everything else is a 0. Taking the fast Fourier transform of the filter is capital H and then viewing that um, just for visualization. This is um, the Fourier transform of our filter and it looks, if you can imagine um, these uh, lobes um, look like the sync function. In fact it is a sync function in two dimensions. Okay, so let's go and um, do our filtering. So we do a point by point multiplication. Notice I use the dot asterisk, meaning point by point instead of a matrix multiplication. Um, and I'll take the inverse Fourier transform, IFF52 of capital G. Whoops. Um, Oops, sorry, I misspelled that, should be real. And go ahead and display that. So that is the blurry version of the input image um, as a result of doing that. Okay, just some uh, notes on low pass filters. So recall that um, we looked at a box filter in the sp spatial domain, how that worked, which looks like um, something like this. So, and we also knew that the transform of a box filter, um, the spectrum of that is a sync function, which looks like that. So to see what the effect of that would be on, let's say, a step edge function, I'm just looking in one dimension here. So let's say that's our step edge. Now, if I um, think of applying the, um, the box filter in the spatial domain, applying that convolution operator, um, by sliding it over the step edge, I would get zeros until it starts to overlap with the um, non-zero part of the step edge. Then it would increase linearly and then it would max out over here. So this is F um, convolved with H. Okay, um, this uh, does not attenuate high frequencies though because the um, transform of the filter as you can see does not go to zero. It, um, it, it retains non-zero values even for high frequencies. So an ideal low-pass filter does uh, attenuate um, high frequencies to zero. So an ideal low-pass filter um, in the frequency domain is basically a box or rectangle. So if past a certain point, it zeroes out the uh, high frequencies. And we know, since these are Fourier pairs, that the uh, inverse Fourier transform of this box filter would be a sync function. So it would look like, like our sync function. 
Okay, so how would that look on uh, our step edge example? If we think of applying the uh, spatial domain filter of um, to this um, step edge, as we slide it past, we start to see ripples, and then eventually uh, those will go to zero here. So even though the um, even though the um, that's H this ideal low pass filter attenuates um, high frequencies to zero, the effect on applying it to a step edge is to result in this ringing like this. So in two dimensions, um, an ideal low pass filter would look like this. So it would be a uh, circle of magnitude one and then outside outside a certain radius it would go to zero. These are some examples of applying a ideal low pass filter to a real image. Um, note the ringing here in the vicinity of sharp edges like step edges.